Hey guys, so this is gonna be an extremely raw video and eventually as we go through this year, I will be doing more of them. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Aaron. So that was me in 2018. We're now in 2022. I had a great tan. I think I just came back from probably a surf trip or anything. Um, but that was the last time I saw this studio this bare and this empty, except this time we're not moving in, we're actually moving out. So let me take you back a little bit in time. If you haven't been following what we've been doing over the last few years, we are really a company that's grown online and grown because of this amazing digital technology. Let me give you a brief background. So I started doing videos by myself at home, doing recipes and editing those videos by myself. Then I started doing some travel videos where I hired a professional team of videographers and a production company um, to come create content with me. And I, I created the shows and I wrote everything and I just needed people with that technical expertise to produce the videos for me. After that, I did a lot of kind of like random hosting jobs and videos and I would post very eclectically online, never really following a consistent path or consistent programming method. It came to a point where I had about 10 restaurants um, and it was a really kind of difficult time for me. And I decided, okay, I need a place where I can put all my content. And that's when I opened the red light. The red light was basically a pop-up restaurant space that I also used as a commissary and I also used as a content, uh, I don't wanna say studio, but it was basically a kitchen where we were shooting some of our content. What up YouTube? So we're back here with our boy, Chef JP. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs. Today we are making a beautiful bruschetta. I have no idea why I started my spiel in French, but I just did and that just happened. It really was not made to shoot video. It was stainless steel, it was very shiny. I had no idea what I was doing. And again, I still hired freelancers to come help me shoot my content and production companies. And it was really expensive. And I think it was simply because I didn't really believe yet in digital content and that I could make it a full-time job and I didn't know that I could build a company on top of it. So after a while, I didn't really upload much content anymore simply because it wasn't sustainable in terms of cost and I didn't want to go back to shooting everything by myself. Um, so I had really no real direction on what to do until eventually I realized this is something that I'm really passionate about and I would want to invest more time in. And so me and my brother-in-law created Hector One. Welcome to our crib. Uh, which was a hub for all our different companies that we had put up over the years. That was the first time I established kind of like a proper studio space. But if you look at those first videos, we had barely enough light or equipment. Uh, we did things really kind of like on the go, we learned through YouTube videos, through things like Skillshare, and just trying to figure things out just like every other content creator does, especially when you're trying to formalize what you do. So this space I thought was huge at that time. It was like, what, 40, 50 square meters, which for me was a really, really huge leg up. I invested in equipment as the years went along, um, and we were able to kind of get better at what we did. And it really was the start and the spark that really built what the Fat Kid Inside Studios is today, the company and not just the blog anymore. And then 2020 happened um, and we realized that again, we felt like this space was constricting us. It was, it was too small for safety precautions. We couldn't do as much anymore in it. As you know, last year we launched Feature, which now makes us kind of like this boutique media company. And the Fat Kid Inside Studios is a proper production company now, so we do a lot of advertising, commercial work for clients, as well as a lot of narrative documentaries and mini documentaries, um, whether they're branded or not, because that's really what we enjoy doing. And because of those changes, we've realized that we've really outgrown this space, but we still absolutely love it. But unfortunately, it's time to turn the page and it's time for something new. So this is where I used to come to the office when people used to come to the office. 
Um, I do all my work here. There was a bunch of paraphernalia kind of like all over. Um, and then eventually when COVID happened, this all became just storage for all our gear. And we realized that over the span of three, four years, we had purchased a lot of gear because we became more professionals. We had a lot of lights, a lot of cameras, a lot of different lenses, and, and it's, just, it's just a lot. And you add that to everything we need for recipes in terms of condiments and oils and stuff, just this place was absolutely packed. So it's actually nice to see it nice and wide again. Um, and there's a, there, were, there are a couple particularities about this space that we never really talked about uh, in our cooking shows, but let me show you some of them. So a lot of what you see online is kind of like made for the camera. So obviously these counters don't extend all the way. This is a, a fake kitchen. Um, and we would change this backdrop here to just make it look like we had different sets and different feels and we could style it. Um, but when you look at it without the kitchen, it actually looks really weird um, because it's just this thing that's just there. Um, the water pressure was never really the best. Um, and we realized when we were cooking, we were cooking such big amounts and we were doing close to sometimes 10 recipes a day. And this tiny little home sink, which looks good on camera, was absolutely terrible uh, for all the amount of stuff that we had to wash. Um, so it was always a really difficult balancing act of always looking ready to cook and looking um, really kind of put together on camera. But each time the cameras would cut, we'd turn around and scramble to clean everything, to cut everything next to lenses and everything. It was becoming a nightmare after a while. Our biggest problem here was actually nothing to do with equipment. Our biggest problem were rats. Uh, so we have, I don't know, if we have we killed the rat yet? No, the, the rats, we've killed six rats. And these are big mama jamas. <laughs> and every, and that's why you see there's like this weird panel here. This thing is because we had to keep opening it up because the rats would chew our cables. So sometimes you'd see us looking flustered on camera uh, because it was just really hot in here because the rats would always kind of chew all the cables um, and would break our air, air cons basically. We had to keep kind of replacing it and that was becoming really problematic. Um, we also had rats kind of dig in and break into like our plastic boxes and they were eating our flour, our condiments. Um, you could probably see, do we have any left here, Chess? No. Here? If you look at this, so this is where gear is supposed to be. Look at that. That was chewed by a rat. And there's no, there's nothing to eat in here, man. It's like literally wires. And so the rats would chew through our bag. I'm super excited to show you the new space. So this is the main studio space. Huge difference from the previous studio space. I mean, it's exactly 11 times bigger. This is where all our video and picture shoots will be done. What you see in white is mostly gonna be uh, for pictures and if we put backdrops, if we need to change the painting of the wall, we can do all that here. And then the video areas will be here. Right now it looks really black and it's all soundproofed. So if you come here, which is super important, because it was very, it's a warehouse, so it was very echoey. Um, so we had to kind of soundproof everything with these wooden panels that are all over the wall, all over the ceiling, all very expensive. Um, but that contains the sound and it makes it sound better. And since we're gonna be doing a lot of live studio shoots, sound is extremely important. That was one thing I didn't mention about the old space, it was really annoying. You're right next to the street. So each time we would hear a and you could probably watch your videos and you'll, you'll hear the beep, 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 whatever. It was part of it. But in here, it's gonna be super quiet. So I wanted sound to be absolutely perfect. It looks like it's still being built, but honestly, we are about a week away. Um, and next week, we'll be installing and building the two main kitchen sets where we'll be shooting all our recipe videos. And those are gonna be really special. When you cross over from the studio, this is probably the spot that we're most excited of. Like people would be excited of the studio space. 
We're excited that we have a stainless steel kind of like kitchen to work out of because it'll make our lives so much easier. The number one thing that we wanted to do is this. It's a massive, massive dishwashing pit and it's gonna save our lives in terms of how we clean our stuff and just everything stainless steel so it's really easy to kind of clean. We have a proper location now for equipment storage. We'll show you that when it's done, but one of the other massive changes that we have obviously is we need space for our team. Um, so we built proper offices and proper hair and makeup rooms uh, for the talents that might come shoot with us over here. So I'm gonna stop the in construction tour here. And next time you see me, we're gonna be showing you the space when it's done. Um, it's a little messy because we just moved in. Uh, we're still figuring out our systems and we just shot today as well, so it's kind of all over the place. But the one thing that has changed our lives completely is this here. Now, I know in the Philippines this isn't necessarily very, um, what's it called? Popular. Let me take out my radishes. Why are we using this as a storage space? Um, but basically, this is a dishwasher, which we're currently using right now. I personally had no idea that Smeg did dishwashers. Um, there's enough for 12 different plates and settings to go in there. Uh, we sometimes put our pots and pans in there as well as our glasses. It just really kind of, um, what's it called? Washes everything with high pressure, hot water. Um, so it really helps just clean things really thoroughly when sometimes washing it by hand is not enough. Um, so this is a really key component that we have um, in this studio. And obviously all the shelf space and everything, once all of this is fixed, it's gonna be so beautiful and so organized. So if you're a food stylist or if you're a food company or you're a company that wants to shoot food content, I see this as extremely essential to prep and then we can go in there and actually shoot the food. The dining room, the conference room, the makeup room, I mean, we'll show you some shots of what it looks like now. It's still not finished, we're still gonna get it furnished. Um, we're almost done, I think in the next 10 days, everything's gonna be ready to go, so we can actually get lots of different people in here to shoot. Um, but the studio we've been using, you can actually see it through the looking glass here. Um, the studio is pretty much ready and functional. So we have a little prop area for plates, all our styling gear right here. Inside here is still being organized as well, but we'll have all our um, little props that we might need to set. We can switch out kind of like the color panels and everything that's going around in the set here. We also have some pots and pans and things that we have. Snag also sent us some really beautiful cookware, which we actually used today in, in one recipe. These are so gorgeous. We've been cooking it for a while. I love these long handles that you actually don't feel the heat in. Um, and the food we've been making in them have been absolutely beautiful. So if you didn't know that Spank had a cookware line, um, they do. And it's something that you should get into, especially because they have different colors that are really nice and pretty. This is Chester having his dinner. <laughs> so this is kind of like where all the magic happens. So again, obviously we can change everything up here. Um, we've used this set for a few days now, we're still getting used to it, still getting used to the quirks and everything. There's a lot of light, lighting involved um, to make things look really pretty, obviously, um, but so far so good. Um, I, don't know if you see, I don't know if you saw the previous video that we posted, um, it was just a really quick video to show you what this looked like in action. Um, and I'm really happy with the color and with how the food looks, it just looks really appetizing and fresh and vibrant. All these panels are on wheels, so these things are movable. We can kind of flatten the set and kind of fix everything to the corner there. Um, this is a photo wall, which we use today, not for photo shoot, but just to shoot some ID pictures. Um, it's a really cool warped wall, so you, it's, it has that infinity effect when it's properly lit. Um, and yeah, it's just tons of space. We'll use this wall to kind of paint if we need green screens or anything. Um, so it's a really versatile space and it's our little playground, so do you want to play? Can you play with it? 
Sound weird? So this is the new space. It feels so good to be here after months of just getting everything together and really pouring over the details in terms of what we wanted, how we wanted it to come about and what we wanted it to look like eventually. And I'm really happy with the result. It is, I would say maybe 70, 80% done. It's fully functional. Uh, we're shooting a couple of new videos here right now. Um, obviously, we're still waiting for furniture to come in, for lighting fixtures to come in. But in terms of the shooting studio space, this is pretty much it. After two years of this wild roller coaster and plus plus the years before that, it really does feel like we finally have a permanent and safe home, but also playground where we can flex our creative juices and just do a lot more of what we used to do in the past. So we are officially now open for business in the Fat Kid Inside Studios and it feels really good. We will be able to focus on creating more high quality in-studio shows, but also have a place where we can come together and edit things together and just really kind of operate as a team and be able to create things that really excite us, things that we haven't been able to do over the last two years. So what does that mean? It means from us, you can expect more content, more documentaries, more series, more cooking shows with different faces. We can finally invite people without freaking out about potentially getting COVID from them or having to spend hundreds of thousands of pesos in RT-PCR and, and um, antigen tests, even though we're still being ex extra safe, but at least there's a space to move around. This also means we could potentially have an audience here while we're shooting and have like 15 or 20 people of anyone who's watching these videos actually experience what we're doing and how we put things together and really just kind of deepen that relationship with everyone who's been watching us over the years. Aside from what you see online on YouTube, on Facebook, under Feature, the Fat Kid Inside Studios will also be just pouring all our effort into more of the commercial and ad work and food content creation work that we do for the brands that have worked with us in the past or any of you brands that want to work with us now as well as any new and upcoming content creators who might need um, to level up their production but just don't know where to start. This is what the studio is for. If you guys want to shoot cooking videos or you want to host your own cooking show, come over here. Let us put it together for you. Let us help you and let's collaborate together to just create better quality videos online. Over the years, we've evolved in how we do things. We used to do only um, a lot of sponsored and branded content on our channels and then we evolved to creating content for brands for them to post on their channels without us ever being known to be the ones to produce those. Um, we're already working with a couple of brands like that, so if there are any brands out there who do want to work with us in that respect, uh, feel free to reach out. Our emails are in the description box below. I'd love to have a conversation about where you are in terms of your digital content creation and how to level up and deepen your connections with your consumers and how you can reach out to them. Um, I love having these types of conversations and just kind of being very transparent of what I've learned over the years and how we can help you kind of scale up. Aside from the branded work that we do, I think one thing over the last few years that has really kind of solidified my love and passion for the work that we do in this industry is the impact that we can create. Uh, we did a video about Asin Tibuok in Bohol, which was one of our favorite videos that we put together simply because the story was so strong and impactful and that the people who were making it weren't necessarily seen in the Philippines as artisans or artists or people we should particularly be proud of. And after that video, I feel like a lot of people kind of um, just became so interested in Asinti Book and that particular product and it really encouraged the artisans themselves but everyone in Behold be extremely proud of it. I think a few days after we posted the video it went viral. The governor of Bohol went to visit the space and see how he can make it part of um, an ecotourism tour. The owner of the shop told me that she was sold out and she had never had received so many orders and text messages and calls from absolutely all over the world of people who wanted to buy that salt. So that being said, we really want to create videos with more impact. So we're looking for people to help us tell those stories. If you have stories in your town, your little village, little barangay of a per particular person or particular product that you think might disappear if we don't talk about it more or if we don't use it more in our cooking, whether it's produce, whether it's something that they're making, whether it's a sauce or a vinegar, 
Um, let us know. Our doors are always open for suggestions. If there's something that you truly feel deserves the limelight and that really does represent Filipino culture and the Filipino spirit, please send us those stories. We'd love to be able to kind of work on them and to shine a light on them, hopefully, so that the whole world can see how special the country is. Expect lots more from us, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. Holy death, can't you wait for the young to have their say? By the time that we think to run, it's too late and our bodies crumble just like quiet buildings at the dusk.